From UFOs to psychic powers and government conspiracies, history is riddled with unexplained events. You can turn back now or learn the stuff they don't want you to know. The fog rolls in. <laughs> How are Eagle Scouts perceived by the content kept in their trunks? I'll make this as quick as I can. And I had, I had to. Like, this is funny. This is this was messed up. So, when I was a young Viking, uh, traveling around my hometown, as previously mentioned, in Boise, Idaho, um, getting my Eagle Scout there, I became accustomed to traveling with certain safety equipment for dealing with, you know, the things you might find in the mountains that might be dangerous. Mountain lions grizzly bears, wolves, and drunk rednecks. So I had a, I, I had a revolver in, in a safety bag that sat on my floor because I used to spend my weekends there in the mountains. I was pulled over for speeding one day and they went through my car and they found the revolver and got very excited about it. And then they opened the trunk, and then they got real fucking excited about it. So excited, in fact, that after I posted bail for being arrested with a concealed weapon without having a permit, I didn't have a permit to carry it concealed. Like, it's in a bag. Whatever. Wasn't a big deal. Fines paid, community service done. But... The contents, they, <laughs> they believed that I was a, I can't make this up, neo-Nazi enforcer. So much so that I had to go to the fourth floor of the Wells Fargo building in downtown Boise, Idaho, where I found out that's where the FBI office is. At least one of them. And I sat there for an hour and a half to two hours having an impromptu psyche valve done by two agents. I still have one of those cards in my wallet. Um, but I kept it because I'm like, I'm never going to forget this. It was a hilarious conversation. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details about it here. It's just way too much. It was one of the funniest conversations I've ever had. I may or may not have been under the influence. But they had a cop all the around for like two weeks. It was a mess. Uh, anyway. <laughs> but no, just an Eagle Scout. I told them that many times. It was pretty funny. Uh, <laughs> love the show, guys. Hope you get a laugh. Bye. <laughs> the fog rolls in. I love that guy, man. Oh, yeah. Me too. Viking is the best. Mm. Uh, so, a story of what can happen when... Your vehicle is filled with stuff that you may want to use if you've gone through training to become an Eagle Scout or anyone else who's done a lot of outdoor survival training or anything like that. Um, <laughs> it went wrong for Viking, obviously. A little bit wrong, at least. Uh, and it's gone wrong for a lot of people, as as I found out just after hearing this. But um, we, you remember this? We joked about it. We joked about something with the contents of people's trunks, like making authorities believe they're serial killers because yes. they have go bags and all kinds of stuff, mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> equipment. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I don't know. What, what's your take on that initially, Ben? Uh, well, I would say I'm glad. I'm glad you get out, got out of that. I think those sorts of impromptu conversations happen more often than a lot of people realize and because you're coming to us from a safe place now viking so glad to hear it uh, we can look back on this with a little bit of amusement and levity but those conversations don't always turn out to be those you know kind of fun stories for parties and friends uh, you can get profiled 
based on this kind of stuff. Even if, you know, even if you have the correct permit for your state in the U.S., uh, you can still end up being profiled. Like, the thing is, law enforcement can just take you in. You know what I mean? And then later find a, a reason why in these worst case scenarios. But we do have to realize, you know, that when you're talking about the alphabet boys and when you're talking about law enforcement, there's a reason that they clamp down on this stuff. Now, obviously, Viking, you are not a neo-Nazi enforcer. Uh, that might sound a little strange to a lot of us who are not in uh, Boise, Idaho, or haven't spent time in Idaho, but they're not coming from nowhere with that concern because uh, neo-Nazi groups are active in Idaho. And as a matter of fact, just uh, last year, just August of last year, they had uh, a group of neo-Nazis had been arrested and charged with planning some some pretty significant power grid attacks. Did you see that one too, Matt? I did. Yeah, I did. Uh, yeah, and, and there are similar groups across the country and probably the world. Uh, little cells that operate, um, hopefully little cells, uh, <laughs> at least for now. Do you want to talk about that, Ben? I was going to, I actually talked to Viking just momentarily today. And I got a few more details that, again, maybe that's why I'm feeling more amused about this. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hit he gave what? a few more details. <laughs> yeah. What happened? Um, okay. So I'll, I'll just give you details from our conversation. Uh, this right. was about 10 years ago when, mm. when this went down, when it occurred. He definitely had a revolver, on, you know. In the car with him, it was in a travel bag, as he describes it, or a backpack. It was on the, on the floor. He described it as a self-defense weapon, as, as we heard in the message. Um, and the Boise PD definitely considered it a concealed weapon without a permit. Viking says, quote, I was speeding. I was definitely doing that. <laughs> but they really believed they had me on this other thing. Like, they just fully believed it. And it has to do with when they opened their trunk. And he didn't want to go into the details with all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm gonna get I'm gonna get to it here in just a moment. The Boise PD, independent of the federal guys, the FBI, did send someone a patrol a patrolman, I guess, that they assigned to him to follow him from work to home to oh, wow. the uh, to uh, what do you call it the community service that he was performing to uh -huh. friends' houses, back and forth. He knew this person was on him at all times. Uh, it wasn't subtle, I suppose. It was just watching him, making sure they understood his movements. That's when the FBI dropped by his house, apparently, and they left a card that simply stated, call us immediately. Oh, wow. <laughs> so he had to take the initiative to get in contact with the local FBI office. <laughs> and then he did. He went in. He said at the time he was, oh, what did he call it? Smoking grass. He was smoking grass quite a bit at the time. So when he went to the FBI building, or rather the Wells Fargo building where the FBI was located, he was elevated, quite elevated, he says. And there were two agents. One was very nice. One was very angry. Um, the, the nice guy was a bit older. The mean one looked like he worked out a lot. And the mean one kept insisting about the contents of the truck and they were stuck on a few different items. One of the main items was a gas mask, mm -hmm. which I can imagine is a bit alarming. If you open a, a trunk or you're searching a vehicle and you find a gas mask, maybe, I don't know. Is that, should that be alarming? What do you think? Would that be alarming? Well, it's so it, it's possible that they had some kind of information or, you know, maybe they had UC, someone undercover, who had named for them the possibilities of attacks that were being considered by groups like, you know, the Aryan Freedom Network or whatever. And if one of those involved uh, the dispersal of some kind of agent, then they would they would then have a list of kind of things to look out for, right? Things that might be connected, possibly to someone who would be planning an attack like that. But it, it really, Viking, really what it sounds like is that they had some idea or some report of possible actions and they just profiled the hell out of you. 
Uh, like it's 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 strange because you know there are people in law enforcement who spend their entire careers looking at militias, separatist gangs, cartels. You know, no learning their behavior, their rights, their rituals. I mean, rights R I T E S, not the uh, R I G H T S rights, which are often ignored. <laughs> but uh, but the the thing there is like uh, if I saw a gas mask. And again, I'm not a law enforcement professional. Neither of us are. But if I saw a gas mask on a search, I mean, yeah, it would stand out. But you would also want a little more, right? Like you can't just it's not illegal to own a gas mask. And there are hundreds of thousands of people in the U.S. alone who don't have like a career reason or a workplace reason to have a gas mask. But they want to be prepared in case something goes down. You know what I mean? So I I would chalk that up to that. But I, I can see how they would say we need to do a little more digging. And, of course, the good cop, bad cop routine, tale as old as time. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, in this case, I, I have a feeling, Viking, you will you can call in and correct me if I'm wrong. I feel like you've got a real sense of humor about a lot of things. Uh, and I feel I, I and I imagine you in that interrogation room, uh, interview room, whatever they would have called it, uh, just not taking things very seriously uh, because of how you told me you responded when they were grilling you on the gas mask. <laughs> uh, this is These are direct quotes from our conversation. The FBI said, what was the gas mask in the trunk for? He said, yeah, we can skip that question. And the FBI <laughs> said, no, we can't. No, we can't. And he said, is it for Look, I wear it for fun. Oh, I, I wear, wear it for, for fun. fun. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and they were like, and they were looking at him, so, you know, like, uh huh. He said, "It's like for sex, man. Come on." And they're like, "Oh, whoa, 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 whoa." So he, t I have a feeling he like maybe took it to that place to uh, generate an uncomfortable response, yeah. maybe on purpose. I don't know. Well, I don't it's, know. It's also it that part could be true, but uh, yeah, <laughs> maybe it's true. But either way, you know, you can totally, you can totally have that. There's again, there's nothing illegal about that. You know what I mean? What often in those interrogations, you're asked the same question in a number of different ways. The idea being that if you are lying, you will eventually trip up, which people do all the time. So if, so it's also weird that he didn't have a, he didn't lawyer up but it sounds like things turned out okay anyhow. I love that answer, though. Whether or not it's true. Yeah, that's, I'll that's be too. Great answer. <laughs> yeah, we But here's the that. thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, we, we don't need to talk about it. Um, there are certain laws in place that have mandatory sentence, sentencing still. Right. That, that's, a, that's a real thing that we've talked about in a you know, a lot of different ways. Importantly, when it comes to drug laws within the United States, the concept of mandatory minimums that that this country decided to enact uh, for quite a while there. Uh, but in other things like gun charges, concealed weapons charges without permits, things like that, there's kind of something that has to happen when an incident occurs and it's reported to police, you know, and there's an investigation of any kind. And I just really quickly want to mention... Uh, the story of one person named Cole Withrow that I was not familiar with. It's an incident that occurred in 2013. This person, Cole Withrow, was a high school student in North Carolina. Over the weekend, he was carrying in his vehicle a shotgun that he uses for skeet shooting. And it's a fairly common thing that he does. He had left it in his vehicle and didn't notice until he reached behind the seats to pull out his backpack and noticed that his shotgun was in the vehicle on school grounds, which he's aware is a problem. So he goes inside to the school, makes a phone call to his mother, and asks her to come and get the vehicle and take it off of school grounds because okay. he, can't, he can't leave. He can't drive the thing home. He's like late for class, basically, because of all this. A staff member at the school overhears calls the police. There's a student on campus with a shotgun. He ends up getting in huge trouble just for physically having a shotgun on campus, even though he's attempting to do the right thing to get it off of campus. Mm -hmm. But he has to go through the system and is charged with a felony. And 
he was expelled from the school as like, these are the rules that are set up when X happens and there's nothing you can do about it. I just wonder how many more things like that exist uh, in our society right now where there's no room for the human element. Like, Mm -hmm. you know, the um, variation on a theme rather than just this is A or B. 